Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're going over 10 crazy ways people have beaten video games. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. If there's a weird way to play a game that we missed, please be sure to tell us about it in the comments. 3 Speedruns at Once The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Super Mario 64 and GoldenEye 007 Multitasking is almost a requirement of the modern age, but this is definitely going the extra mile. Speedrunner Carl Jobst managed to accomplish an impressive bit of multitasking in 2014, speedrunning three of the biggest Nintendo 64 games at the same time. Alternating between The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Super Mario 64 and GoldenEye 007, Jobst was able to not only beat the trio of games, but to do so in under an hour. His ability to effortlessly switch between the different control schemes is amazing to watch in action. <laughs> Steering Wheel Sekiro Shadows Die Twice Oh no, no, I don't know how to go into stealth. YouTuber Cesium is quite skilled at tough video games, particularly the works of From Software. But he isn't just good at them, he's able to beat them with a rather odd control scheme. Instead of using the usual controller setup, Cesium uses a mapped USB steering wheel controller along with pedals to speedrun these notoriously tough games. In this case, we're highlighting his run through Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Cesium manages to finish the game in a little over 10 hours, and he doesn't even sidestep. Now that's some impressive driving. <laughs> Fishing Rod, Dark Souls 3. I'm surprised that, like. Sticking with the From Software theme, Dark Souls 3 players have also come up with some unusual controllers to use for the brutal game. One such interface is a fishing rod controller. Although it has buttons and a joystick, this odd controller also has a spinning reel that the streamer in question, a twerking Yoshi, has to fight against throughout his run of the game. While most players would probably have thrown this controller back after a few bosses, Yoshi kept this one on the hook and it pays in this unique spin on Dark Souls 3. Hey man, it was so fun to get those kills. That's it, game, good stuff. See you later, dude. <laughs> Blowing into a recorder with their nose. Super Mario World. <laughs> Super Mario World is one of those games everyone knows, but few people know it well enough to play it with their nose. Nico Nico user Wacko played through at least the first world of the game by using a program called AudioPad to map the controls to different notes. Then, for reasons known only to him, he decided to control Mario by playing these notes on a recorder, using his nose. Just thinking about our own skill at the game has us thinking we're snot as good as we thought we were. <coughs> using his vision impairment, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Okay, so I know that I have to make it to the vines on the other side of the room straight ahead of me, but I'm not quite lined up, so I'm gonna take one half step. Right this way. People with disabilities have managed to create some pretty impressive workarounds to play their favourite games. And while we were tempted to talk about the man living with paralysis who played PUBG with his mouth, our pick went to Terry Garrett, a player who lost his sight at the age of 10 and beat The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Garrett spent five years memorising audio cues and level layouts before he was finally able to play through the game in its entirety. To further assist him, Garrett used speakers to differentiate the direction of sounds, as well as save states in case he messed up. It's inspiring to watch, not only for Garrett's dedication, but also to see how well-conceived Ocarina of Time's sound design is to make it possible. Okay, this should give me the right lineup to put the sword back. Twitch, Pokemon franchise. <laughs> If there's one thing everyone can agree on, it's how chaotic and disagreeable the denizens of the internet are. Which is why Twitch Plays Pokemon is so impressive. 
An anonymous streamer created this social experiment, wherein a Twitch stream's chat comments are able to complete inputs into various Pokemon games. Despite taking much longer than normal given the number of trolls and their contradictory inputs, the Twitch channel has managed to complete dozens of playthroughs of Pokemon games and ROM hacks. It just goes to show that even when trying to cooperate, Twitch commenters can still be chaotic and entertaining. Bongos, Dark Souls. The original Dark Souls has inspired a lot of unusual methods for completion, likely due to its reputation for difficulty and its fans' desire for bragging rights. While we considered discussing a blindfolded run of the game, we instead went with an unusual controller, bongo drums. Twitch streamer Bearsley has used some of the most varied methods for beating the game out there. Seriously, he has the Guinness World Record for it. One of these included bongo drums, or at least the bongo drum controller created for the GameCube game Donkey Konga. While not as musically impressive as you might think, his run is still fun to watch. Without the A button, Super Mario 64. Mario jumps. It's kind of his thing. And he usually does so with the A button. YouTuber Scott Buchanan, known by his screen name Panacook2012, has done a challenge to complete as much of Super Mario 64 without using the all-important button as possible. While he does use safe states and tool assistance, Buchanan has managed to complete the game with under 20 presses of the A button, as of 2020. Given his devotion to Super Mario 64, we wouldn't be surprised if he manages to make that number even smaller in the future. Here we go! Three games simultaneously. Mega Man X, Mega Man X2, and Mega Man X3. We've already discussed a gamer who managed to beat three different games by alternating between them, but how about three different games using the same command inputs? YouTuber T.O. devised a tool-assisted speedrun for the first three Mega Man X games. A single controller is wired into three different emulators in order to play them all at the same time. Sort of. With tool assistance, there are some further modifications, so while it may not be happening live, the fact that all three games can be completed this way, and in under an hour no less, is positively god-level gaming. Pomegranate, Hades. White doesn't sound like a good idea, but um, it actually is because it lets me see where the juice is. Pomegranates act as important power-ups within the challenging roguelike game Hades. Streamer Dylan Beck, known as Rudism Online, decided to thread some wires through a real pomegranate to make an ad hoc controller. Sliced into 10 pieces, Beck connected the fruit to a circuit board and used the pomegranate to beat Hades. There's palms of power and then there's this thing. Most playthroughs of Hades tend to be messy, usually involving a lot of deaths and trial and error. And Beck's attempts get extra messy, given all the pomegranate seeds. Defeating the god of the underworld has rarely been so delicious. Yo! <laughs> Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.